This is the Rich Dad Stockcast with Andy Tanner, the show that kicks 401ks in the asphalt and teaches you to be the master of your own stock investing domain. And here's your host, Greg Arthur. All right, welcome to the Stockcast show. This show is probably going to be Andy Tanner's favorite show. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure we're we're going to actually look at what makes a great investor. So I think uh, I think we all probably want to hear that. Um, I'm not going to give you a big long intro because I think Andy's got quite a lot to share with us. So let's bring on Andy Tanner right now so he can highlight his favorite show. Hey, Greg Arthur, this is going to be so fun. You know, I, I, I'm a little afraid. I'm afraid I don't meet the criteria. Oh, uh, you meet the criteria. Well, we're all striving, right? We all speak from our own weaknesses, right? All of us, right? We, we strive and speak from our own strugglings. Uh, what a great topic. What makes a successful investor? I've been trying to figure that out for 30 years <laughs> and I'm still working on it. If you but don't know, so, we're doomed. But I have some opinions in my journey so far and I hope people enjoy this particular podcast. Um, I'll give you a little background. I've been teaching and studying both. You know, I've always considered myself a student, uh, you know, 30 some odd years. It's to, when, when you say it like that, right? I mean, that's a long time to pursue something and try to get better at it. And so I've, I've had the chance, you know, Robert's been gracious and invited me to travel with him. And we've, we've seen a million people. I mean, we really have. And, uh, and, and it's interesting that I think a lot of people would, in, would inherently uh, feel that uh, there's a mindset and a context that is common among wealthy people. If you, you know, there's a, a man named Jack Schwager who wrote a book called The Market Wizards. He just interviews people who have done well in the stock market. But even if you and I picked, you know, anyone we wanted to have dinner with and have a big dinner party, and we say, well, let's get Branson and Cuban and Buffett and, you know, Gates and whoever else we want to get, you know, the billionaires, there'd be some commonalities there. And there's also this feeling that with that mentality, if you distributed all the money and gave it, you know, to the poor, it's going to be back in the rich hands again. So there's all those things that we internally talk about and we feel but I, I, I think it'd be interesting to get a little more detailed on what that mindset is and what it looks like. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Yeah, I think in just a, a couple of episodes ago, you said, would you, if you had Warren Buffett's money, would you give all that money away just to get Warren Buffett's mind? And your answer was yes, because you, if you had Warren Buffett's mind, you could make it all back and, and then some. Yeah, I mean, if Kenny McElroy fell on hard times for a reason or had his money removed from him, does anyone watching this have any doubt at all? I mean, you think him, Kenny just say, well, I guess that's it. You know, let's go find my shelter and my cup and maybe someone will help me out. No, nah, he would build again. And, you know, in my case, I've lost businesses before and you build again. You know, I, 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 if I listed all the mistakes I've made, we wouldn't have enough time. You know, there's not enough hard drive space to, to handle that on YouTube. I'll tell you. Right, right, right. Long time. Well, you know, Robert always says, cause you said you're a lifelong learner and you've been yeah. doing it for 30 years. Robert always says that as soon as you stop learning, you start dying. It's true. Very yeah. true. You either grow or you shrink. You know, one or the other. So let, let me start with this idea. One of the things that people do is there's a culture or a context of advice. And I'd like to speak about that, if I may, for just a bit, where, you know, as a rich dad advisor, people ask for advice, you know, which is probably, a, we should probably change our name then. If we don't want people asking for advice, maybe I shouldn't, you know, say I'm an advisor. But what that means is, is think about this. If you are looking for advice, if you're looking for answers, that, that tells me that a person believes that they think that successful investing is a function of buying the right stuff, right? Hey, if I buy the right things and I tell, if I know the future and I, you know, if I buy the right stuff, then I'll be successful. If I buy the wrong stuff, I'll be a failure. So that, that's hard to argue with logically, right? If I buy the right things, I'm going to be successful. If I buy the wrong things, uh, I won't be. And so uh, people start hunting for deals. And they start asking questions like, what do you think of Bitcoin? What do you think of real estate? What do you think of starting a business? What do you think of stocks? And they start saying, what's the best investment? What's the best place for my money? 
And we get this, this is Robert's uh, question. People ask Robert, uh, if we only had $10,000, what would you buy? You uh, ever heard? He hates that question. Yeah, I mean, when he, well, why does he hate that question? Well, he hates it because there's, there's a couple of reasons. One, you're not learning anything if he just gives you the answer. There you go. But the other thing is, if he did give you the answer, what he would do, who's got his life experience, who's got his knowledge. So he would tell you what, yeah, he would tell you what he would do. And if you tried to, well, you could, but if I tried to do that, I would be, fall flat on my butt. You know, if my mother came to me and said, Andy, I want to do what you do. Can I just, you know, what's your favorite thing to do? I wouldn't, I, I could tell her, but she couldn't do it. Right. Because there's more to it than just predicting the future and saying, I'm buying this and boom. They, so a couple ideas, number one, they think that, you know, if you can predict the future, look, the defining characteristic of investing is unpredictability. In my opinion, real estate markets, gold markets, you know, Oh, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to see in the future and see in the future. And if a person think about this, if, if I'm right, you know, if, and you can disagree, everyone's free for their own opinion, but if the defining characteristic of the markets is their unpredictability, then trying to predict those is a fool's errand, right? It fair. just is. And so for those reasons, so, so think about this, my wife and I are probably exactly like the people who watch this podcast. The thing that we have in common is we had Rich Dad, Poor Dad come into our lives in some way. I'd say 99% of people probably read the book. So a friend of mine gave it to me in the 90s. And my wife and I always tell this story. And if you've heard this before, forgive me, but I'll tell it again because it's just such a great moment for us. Is uh, we, we said, let's read it together. I started reading. I'm like, this is pretty good. And so we bought another copy. I said, sweetheart, let's read this together. So each night we, you know, Get, a, get ready for bed, climb in bed, and we'd read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I think other people have more interesting things to do when they go to bed, but my wife and I read Fish Dad, Poor Dad. That's what we did. And we read it. And the message we took from it on the first reading was, ah, buy assets, not liabilities. There's assets, put money in my pocket, liabilities, take it out. Here's this financial statement, fill the asset column. What, rinse and repeat. So we went out with that mindset. Okay, what should we buy? And we were going to be real estate investors. And Greg, I'll tell you, I'll bet we looked at 100 houses. I'll bet we did. I'll bet we looked at 100 of them. And all of a sudden, uh, it'd be summer and we'd see this house and it seemed like a good deal. We're like, why is this guy trying to give it to me for such a good deal? You know, what's, what am I not catching here? And you know, it's summer. We haven't had rain in two months. You know, what if the roof leaks in the winter? Or what if you know, what if we rent it and they make crystal meth in the basement or what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, and the fog of concern settled over us. And I'll bet we looked at a hundred houses and we got an F we failed. We failed to buy an asset because every time we get close, there were details we didn't understand. We just, we didn't know it was a great deal or not. Uh, you, you didn't buy one. We didn't buy one house. You got what Kim calls analysis paralysis. Could be. Yeah. We just, we, we had, we, every time we get to that point with that, and we just weren't confident that we were doing the right thing. And, you know, back then for us, you know, in the nineties, you know, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, we're like, you know, we don't want to make these big life changing mistakes. We probably should have, but we didn't. So my wife said, let's read it again. And I don't do encore reading very often. You know, once I've read something, it's like, I've seen that movie. And I thought, you know, let's do, let's see what we missed. And I'm, this is a great story. She said, so we say, okay, tonight we'll read it again. So we, you know, brush our teeth, get ready for bed, you know, pop open the, the lamp on the nightstand. And my wife grabs the book and she goes, I got it. I know what we missed. I said, you haven't even opened it yet. She goes, look at the cover, rich dad, poor dad. I go, so she goes, we already have the poor dads. We're halfway there. <laughs> and, you know, we have wonderful fathers. My father if I become half the man my dad is in terms of honesty and goodness and, and just caring and unselfishness and sacrifice and my father-in-law, same thing. And so we chuckled at that, but they never had the knowledge to, to invest, to pass on to us. And, and all of a sudden our context, Greg, changed. Watch this. We stopped looking for deals and we started looking for people that could help us improve. Now think about that for a minute. Um, 
we were like, let's go buy real estate. We were so antsy to buy the asset, antsy to buy something that we realized that Rich Dad, Poor Dad is actually, yeah, it's a book about assets and liabilities, but more so it's a book on mentorship. It's a book about a man who had someone who had a teacher who found the teacher. You know, if, if Rich Dad wouldn't have been there for Robert, knowing Robert as I do, I bet he'd have found another because I think he saw, he's always sought teachers you know, and he had his rich dad, but he also had like Buckminster Fuller and, you know, many other, other people along the way that have taught him. And so we changed our focus, Greg, and I said, let's stop looking at real estate and let's start looking for people that can help us learn and watch what happened. All of a sudden, the focus went from an external world of where's the asset? What do I buy? Bitcoin, gold, what, what, what? What do I buy? Instead of being in the advice world of asking people what they thought about things, it became an internal world where we said, let's start looking for people that can help us improve. Now, now if, if I can somehow summon the language to communicate this well, this is why I think this is one of my favorite shows. It could be one of my favorite shows is when a person makes that transition from wanting to know what to buy to the personal development of themselves as an investor, in my humble opinion, that is the first step towards becoming more successful. Let me put it this way. Which is more correct? Success is a function of the investments. Success is a function of the investor. You have to choose. You choose have to which go, one. You got to go with the second one. Well, let's say there's four asset classes. You know, Robert, Robert's a Marine. So if there's a fight, he loves it. He'll have a front row seat, you know, and, and he's, he, he likes that type of stuff. You know, Hey, Kenny, why is stock, why is uh, real estate better than stocks? Hey, Andy, why are stocks better than real estate? And that's kind of fun to do. But in reality, let's look at all four asset classes. Let's start with business. Uh, can you find billionaires in business? Do they exist? Yes. Okay. Can you find people that are bankrupt? <laughs> yes. Okay. So it's not a function of the asset class, is it? Because both people have bought or built businesses. If you look at Branson and Cuban and, you know, all and Bezos and all these guys, uh, you know, Elon Musk, you know, Robert starting businesses, is it because they went into business or because of who they were as per, uh, I think it was a function of their own personal development, right? You know, Gates, Robert, you know, has his things about Gates. I actually like Gates because I've studied him. And that dude studied, he's insatiable. He'll, he'll, he'll get a, he's like Robert in a lot of ways. He'll get a tote bag full of books and go to his little island in Seattle and say, hey, go and talk to me for a week. And he'll read them all. He'll speed read them. So I've seen him interviewed time and time again. They go, what's the most important point and thing you do every day? He goes, learn. He goes, I, I, I'm, I'm still learning. You know, he's an older guy now and he still learns. It's about the personal development of what you can learn. If we take uh, real estate, can we find billionaires in real estate? Yes. Can we find bankrupt people? Yes. So is the secret real estate? No. Or is it the personal development of that investor? And we get so greedy. Greedy is wanting a lot for a little, right? It's natural. I'm greedy, you're greedy. Greedy isn't about having lots of money. There's poor people that are greedy. There's rich people that are greedy. A greedy is a feeling you have of wanting, wanting, wanting a lot for a little or something for nothing. And a lot of rich guys want a lot for little. And, and you know, even infant returns should serve someone in the exchange. There should be some value there, right? Otherwise, we just print money. And so, and so when a person looks at real estate, is it the real estate that made Kenny successful? Or was it Kenny that made Kenny successful in that asset class? Let's take stocks where now you have the king of the mountain. You know, you look at Bezos, who's rich, and Elon Musk and rich. But the thing that makes Buffett different is Buffett's not an entrepreneur. Buffett bought all his businesses. Even Berkshire Hathaway was purchased, not right. started. I don't know. I mean, he might have had a startup somewhere, but I don't know personally of one large business, Buffett started from scratch, built it as a businessman. He's bought them and let the entrepreneurs do their thing. You know, Steve Jobs is the entrepreneur, but look how much of Apple uh, Buffett owns, right? He's, he's a major shareholder in Apple because he was smart. He bought it. 
So you talk to the king of the mountain and you say, well, stocks must be best because Warren Buffett is the best investor of all time. Well, no, not necessarily, because I can also find people who have gone bankrupt in stocks. And I know I've had my losses in stocks early on, you know. And so, again, you know, you can go into gold, you can go into Bitcoin, you can go into whatever. And, you know, people get enamored with, with the asset rather than enamored with the personal development of the investor. So my, my invitation would be to think about that. If I become successful as investor, is that going to be a function of an asset class or is it going to be a function of my personal development and the rich dads I had along the way? Uh, I can't think of a, you know, people, that's, people want the last step, not the first step, you know, and maybe we should give them the last step, but then they stumble. You start with the first step. And if, it, if the person can have a moment of clarity, and just say, oh my gosh, you know, I have been in the advice culture and that's how Wall Street gets rich. Is Warren Buffett have anything to do with Wall Street? No, he lives in Omaha. No. He has nothing to do with Wall Street. Look, he buys Coke. You can go, you can open up an, a, an account with Ameritrade and trade for free. You know, there's no commissions anymore. You know, they just want your account. And so you can open up and buy some Coca-Cola and get that dividend straight from Coca-Cola. You, you don't have to deal with Wall Street. Wall Street is called assets under management where they're going to manage your money for you and they're going to make decisions instead of you. That's where they make their fees from. So Wall Street is about advice. Wall Street gets rich advice. And why do people need advice? Because they don't know how to invest. So advice is where people go if they have no education. And Greg, I'll just leave it with this. What you said at the top of the show, if Robert told you what to buy, you wouldn't learn anything. Ask me about Bitcoin. Yeah, go buy it. Now, what more do you know about Bitcoin than you did before? Okay, don't buy it. What more do you know? Should I buy gold? Yeah, go, go ahead, go buy it. But once I say, you know, gold is fungible. Well, now we're learning a little bit about gold, right? Um, interesting stuff. So that would be my invitation above all. You got 2020 coming around or 2020 coming to a close. You got 2021 in the future. Decide that what will be my next steps in 2021? Is it going to be to be deeper into the advice culture or into the educational culture of personal development? I love, I love what there's nothing more beautiful than the transformation of a human being. That's a lot more beautiful than a stock chart that happens to go up because someone's lucky. The, the, the increase and in, in beauty of a transformation of a human is much better than a real estate investment that goes well. Absolutely. I mean, and I think, Rob, I don't want to put words in Robert's mouth, but I think he loves to watch people transform. Yeah, in fact, there was a time when he didn't want to call it financial education. He wanted to call it financial transformation. You know, he often says that transformation is the evidence of education, right? So if I say, go buy gold, and you haven't transformed who you are, you really didn't make an ascent. I'll, I'll say two things um, to transform. As a person looks at the gap between where they are now and where they could be as investor, there's usually, we could do another podcast on this, actually, is the first gap is a knowledge gap. You know, there's probably something that someone knows that I don't know, so I can improve myself via knowledge. Then there's a second gap between what I know and how I behave. That's called discipline and temperament. I find I struggle with both. Okay. Uh, the older I get, it seems to be the latter that's the bigger struggle. You know, for, for example, you know, you've been helping me out with, uh, you know, my little weight loss I've been going with. Well, shoot, man, my, one of my majors in college for a while was exercise physiology. I get eat less, move more. There's no knowledge gap there. But, you know, I see that Ben and Jerry's calling my name, you know, and I'm, I start twitching with addiction. So it's about personal development, your temperament as an investor, your ability to be, to bring your knowledge in harmony with your behavior or behavior in harmony with your knowledge, maybe better set. This transformation of personal development is, is where I believe the first step towards success is. So. Uh, success is not a function of getting great advice. Success is a function of the investor, not the investment, not the asset class. I get it. I get it now, but you did put one thing in there that, that I actually never heard before. And you added willpower 
to it. So it's not just knowledge. It's not just experience. It's having the willpower to uh, apply the knowledge and the. Yeah. You know, I've written a little bit of a book on that. I don't know if I'll, I'll uh, publish it. I did it mostly for my own learnings, but when I find a difficult willpower, I have two solutions so far to that. Number one is I try to find joy in a process that I might not have seen. Willpower is something when we do, willpower happens when you do something you don't want to do to get something that you do want. Um, and I've often found that if I can change that process to something I enjoy that brings that similar result, that's a good way. And the other way is hire a coach because they'll make you, I, I hired a trainer and I just got back. Well, you can tell I just got back and uh, I could, I could barely move my mouth because <laughs> he made me do things that I normally wouldn't do because his in his brain, he doesn't feel that pain I'm feeling to do two more reps, right? He, he, two more doesn't hurt him. I'm like, my body's screaming, no more, no more. He doesn't care, two more. So we can talk about that another day. But the overall message I would give is what is, you know, I'll ask you after listening to our conversation, I'll ask the listeners, what's a function of success? Is it more likely to be investment focused that will bring you success? or investor focused that brings you success. And I, I think that if you look at Robert and Kenny and you know the, the successful investors, it's a function of their personal development more than the asset class they chose. Yeah, I actually think you proved that point really well. Well, I don't know if I proved it, but I've submitted it for their review. And Greg, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak each week because this helps me and you Organized thoughts and our own ideas. You know, if no one ever watched it, but the two of us uh, is certainly worth it to me. So I honor you and I honor all the listeners. We thank you for tuning in and we congratulate you for your decision to move forward with more financial education. We hope we find you, we hope you find value in the time you spend with us. We hope it's transformational. There you go. And I do want to reiterate Andy's challenge. Please do put in the comments whether or not it's the investment or the investor, we'd, we'd actually love to see the results of that. And then it would be interesting to see. It. And people might have other ideas, but if you had to choose A or B, you know, what do you really feel is going to be the real key? Which asset class you choose? It's important, but the real function of success is how you develop your, yourself personally. So Absolutely. there you go. There you have it. All right. Hopefully that was your favorite show, Andy. And I love it. I love the big picture. I love the big picture. All right. Well, we'll talk to you next week. See you next week, Craig. All right, thanks, man. Bye, everybody.